love. I have. <laughs> oh my goodness! I am having. What is going on? Okay. Hello. If I have anyone here, I have no idea. My um. My system seems to be a bit scuffy. I'm afraid. I don't know. How peculiar. Anyway. Hi guys. How is everyone today? I am so sorry that we've had a few issues there. Oh my gosh, what was this? The first time we're starting stream? Okay. So, let's go through what just happened. Um, I have an Xbox controller plugged into my system. And that was causing a few problems at the very start. So I, we ended the first stream, so I it was unplugged it, made sure everything was running fine. Started stream again, just there as you guys know. And my whole keys weren't working. And then I couldn't unmute for whatever reason. But anyway, third time's the charm as they say, so we're back. It's, it's all gonna be good, it's all gonna be fine. Anyway, hi, welcome, welcome in everyone. I hope everyone's doing good today. We're gonna, today we're playing Monster Prom again. And it's gonna be a little bit of a shorter stream, maybe like an hour or two, we'll do like two dates or something. Just because this is a very text heavy game and it's gonna wear down my throat so incredibly much because I'm not quite there where I can speak for long hours at a time, I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's okay though. But let's get into it. I don't know that my keyboard's working. Oh my goodness, we're gonna be having so many problems today. It's fine. Let's just power through and see where we get to. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Okay, so I'm gonna continue playing as Blue just because I, I connect to her so much. She's me, I'm her. We're one in the same. Yay. Yay! I hope you guys can hear the audio at least. That'd be great if you guys can. <laughs> can someone can someone tell me if you guys can hear the audio? <laughs> and we had yet to experience the ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remember it clearly. Six weeks were left. I can hear now. Oh hey River! I'm so glad that you can you're here and that you can hear. <laughs> I remember it clearly, six weeks were left, and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Huzzah! Miranda Vanderbilt. A sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. <laughs> Damien LeVay, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love for fire. <laughs> Scott Howe, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. He does have a big heart, we found that out last time. A hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dog. Yay! And Polly Geist, a party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all things. What? Oh, I clicked too fast, I didn't read the last bit. And Vera Oberlin, a mean self made Gorgon with a messless sense of self business. I read that entirely wrong, that last part. Anyway, guys, if you missed last Friday when we played this, we ended up date going on two dates with Scott Howe. The first time he denied us of our any kind of love or affection, but the second time we got him and we got to go to prom with him. And then our third date, we were trying to go with Polly Dice and it wasn't really working out. She was not happy with us. What I learned was that we probably shouldn't buy the ghost costume this time because it did not help us with any kind of shenanigans last time. It really made it worse, if anything. It was clear it had to be one of them, but who? We only had six weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting, we only had six weeks to woo them and conquer their hearts. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. So, since we got Scott last time, I believe we're gonna go for one of the girls again. Um, I'm really feeling Polly. I, I think I think that's who we're gonna go for to start off with. Just she's so cute. She's she's so pretty. We're gonna see if we can slide in there. 
All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Must throw the stupidest pop quiz ever. We'll throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start! Okay. Which inanimate object do you think would make the best girlfriend or boyfriend, provided you weren't criminally insane? An ATM, sugar baby life, here I come. A human sized pillow, depicting a character created by yourself. As a matter of fact, I have all the needed paperwork and I'm only waiting for the cons um, conservative, narrow minded laws of our country to finally step forward into a wife and husband territory, as we clearly intended by God. A dildo, duh. You know what, guys? I think we're gonna go for an ATM, the sugar baby life for sure. Unlimited free food. Let's get wealthy. What is your soul emoji? The emoji that speaks truth of your soul. Octopus emoji, best animal on earth. I know five big drinks, three drug co cocktails, and 17 sex positions that involve one or several octopi. Caucasian guy with a turban because fuck stereotypes. Snowman because that motherfucker is in the middle of blizzard and he's fucking smiling. He doesn't give a fuck about blizzard and he has a kick ass hat. You know what? I think we're gonna go for the octopus emoji, not for that reason, but because to me, he just looks like a silly little guy. He's having the time of his life all the time. He's fun, that's right. What would be your dream first date? Crimes. <laughs> and our expedition experimental enough to give you a seizure? A wild party in international waters? A sweaty and manly wrestling match? professional meeting where your charm new day will show some of your astonishing business advice a lovely walk in the forest after rescuing your date from a dragon i'm gonna say a, a sweaty and manly wrestling match just because i've been watching physical 100 guys if you haven't been watching it i really suggest you do it is a great watch i, I love i love it i love it so much it reminds me of wwe that i used to watch when i was growing up so go watch that if you haven't Oh look, we got Scott again! Oh, I love him! Okay, so, let's go. let's go! Personally, as I said, I think we're gonna start with Polly, and it currently looks like our charm and creativity are pretty low, so I think we're gonna hit up the gym and um, bring up our charm. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Oh. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit. Leading to a spectacular comeback, you've cl you're clearly a natural born leader. You gain plus two charm. Oh, nice. You see hordes of your classmates running away from Vera and Scott. They're all screaming spoilers. Have you seen the latest episode of Detective Where Weasel? Where Weasel finally exposed the cartel's entire operation. Awesome, I did. It was so exciting. I peed on Grandma's carpet. Oh, Scott. We're talking about pissing again with you, aren't we? Not bad. <laughs> I know, right? And the cartel's organization structure is so cool. I took so oh, many notes. Bro. But last night was the last episode. I was so sad. I peed on grandma's carpet. Scott, you just gotta learn. <laughs> well, why don't we start our own TV show? We'll make it better than Where Weasel. Uh, um, better uh, than Where Weasel? Is that even possible? We're the perfect team. I have money and you're the gullible target audience. Gorgon Film Studios requires your ideas. Scott, Gorgon Film Studios? Well, we'll talk about that later. Right now, I need ideas. Oh, okay. So, I mean, guys, she's she's already in front of us. I don't want to piss anyone off. Let's just go in with Vera. She's got the cool little snakes. We love these guys. Hey, buddy, let's give them a pet. Pet, pet, pet. Pet, pet, pet. Okay, moving on. When the Mafia threatens to close his gym, an ugly ass, uh, I don't know how you say that word, <laughs> uh, must expose the uh, syndicate to save the only place that lets him do his reps. Chile, 1985, when Pinchetto floods the market with black cocaine, a, a, a courageous drug dealer becomes a private eye to blackmail Pinocchio and save her cook club. I think we're gonna do that one, I think she'd like that one. Um, also, I'm gonna I'm gonna apologize if I say anything wrong. I can't read that well. It's not my strongest place. <laughs> I really do struggle, so I'm sorry, guys, if I slip up. Oh, she did like it. Did you just create the most relatable detective ever? 
That was a rhetorical question. Obviously a young entrepreneur fighting to save her business from government regulation is objectively relatable. But she's a drug trafficker. It's okay, it's okay Scott. I know you don't like that. She's a businesswoman protecting free markets. Doesn't that sound to you like the uh, monster sh- mon Oh my goodness. I don't think about it this way, but if she, uh, but is she a buff entrepreneur? Like, really buff? Uh, sure, why not? Hooray. hooray! All my objections have suddenly disappeared. He loves anyone who's buff. Vera puts you and Scott to work stuffing packets of promotional cocaine to publicize the TV show. You gain free plus money as payment. Oh, nice! Okay, so, I guess instead of Polly, we're going for Vera now. That's completely fine. Uh, but hey, anyway, we're gonna go hang out with Vera, but we get to hang out with Polly as well. I guess it's so cool. You find Vera and Polly at their table deep in conversation. Alright, business idea. People pay a monthly subscription to prevent me from drugging their food. <sighs> business idea. People pay me a monthly s subscription to put drugs in their food. Mm -hmm. Business idea. Price out the cafeteria's current food supplier by selling plastic food. <laughs> business idea. Nipples. Great business idea there, Polly. Just sniffles? Yeah! Okay. Wait, wait, business idea. Use club marketing and food science to create the perfect new diet craze and sell it for an insane profit. <gasps> That's actually a really good idea. Better than nipples? Yes. We just need to figure out what our new diet project will be. Oh, okay. So take one, they're gluten free, dairy free, 100% organic, and you can eat them for free from sick cows. Meth, it's what's for lunch. Um, I'm gonna do tapeworms, because I think, I feel like Pol um, Polly would like meth. Just from the last prey fruit, I remember she liked to talk about drugs a lot, so we'll try tapeworms. That has been there we go! Yay! Amazing. Vera liked that one. Okay, I'm trying really hard to get the ones they like, because guys, it's so heartbreaking when they say no to going to prom with you, so we're gonna try really hard to get some yeses this time around. What a delicious idea. But what about for like ghosts and stuff? Ghosts wanna lose weight too? We'll just sell ghosts of tape ones alongside the living ones naturally. What are you gonna get tape one ghosts? <laughs> Simple, I'll just kill tape ones with unfinished business. Which is pretty much any tape one, honestly. They're very ambitious. Awesome, well, all of my objections to this plan are solved. Scam away. Soon various new slender friends are all the range in the cafeteria. And she seems to tolerate your presence even more. And everybody's losing weight. Great. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, we're already into the first week. Let's That's go. so cool. Okay, so the next one I want to um, upgrade is creativity. That's also looking a bit low. So that's um, the auditorium that we have to go to. That day, while rehearsing for the cosplay, it's as though the muses themselves have descended to give you figurative oral sex. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations when it's pretty rad by high school standards. You gain plus two creativity. Nice. You spy Vera and Liam engaged in their favorite pastime, a variation of people watching called Monster Judging. So uh, do you see what she's wearing? Newsflash, lime green stripper boats do not go with Chupacara bra fur. So mainstream. Uh, okay. <laughs> At least she made a choice. I've already seen six people wearing the same Air Gorgon sneakers. We really are the lucky ones, Liam. Most people are just absolutely hideous. Oh, uh, she looks so pretty like this. She's, ah, uh, guys, guys, I'm in love with all of them. But even their hideousness is mediocre. Most people are hideous, but I have yet to see one which is the most hideous. Okay, Liam. Yeah, you're a little mean over there. I wonder what such an ambition would even look like. Oh, it says abomination, not ambition. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I did say I wasn't great at reading. True hideousness is on the inside, in your organs. A person with their organs on their outside would be the most hideous. A toned body, symmetrical face, nice features, because traditional beauty standards are hideously mainstream. I don't know which one she's gonna like. I feel like this one. I think Vera would agree with that. Oh well, I get- 
she, I don't know that she's like, I guess she's not as symmetrical as Liam is, so maybe she'd like this one. Should we, should we try this one? Okay, we're, we're just gonna do it, we're gonna cut. Oh, Liam liked that one, oh damn. Finally, someone understands what I've been saying along. It's not people who are ugly, it's society. Damn. He means that conceptually. People in general are still kind of ugly. If everyone stopped focusing so much on society's beauty standards, long fangs, tight wings, thick horns, <laughs> and started focusing on improvement, important things like artisanal bread and the correct bands, Think how much better we would be, he is great, if we focus more on artisanal bread, the world would the, the world would be so much more peaceful, obviously, bread makes the whole world go round. <laughs> Maybe then society would be as beautiful as me, although probably not, I'm stunning. Never forget that Vera o Oberlin was number one on the Perseus pamphlets list of most gorgeous gorgons. Oh goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you would never forget, mostly because you didn't know in the first place, but hey, either way, you gain plus two spots and plus one charm. Okay, well, she didn't like my answer, but I don't think she hated it, Let's go. so surely it couldn't have been that bad. Okay, so, and then we're gonna go for boldness, which is the bathrooms, I believe. That day you skip class and you just hang out in the bathroom schools you for respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hanging out in the bathroom. You give zero shits but you gain plus two boldness. Nice. You catch sight of Liam and Vera nearby doing what they do best. Judging people. Oh, we're judging people again? Oh, okay. Maybe we can give the same answer. Uh, do you see the leggings that Succubus is wearing? How could I not? They're about as subtle as the uh, diadactic intent of Jonathan Swift. A modest proposal. I don't know what I just read. I didn't. It didn't make sense in my brain. You know, Liam, sometimes I worry that we're the only two fashionable monsters at this entire school. She definitely is. I don't know how I'm feeling about Liam's outfit. Uh, I don't know that the bow tie is doing it for me. But then I realized that's not something to worry about. That's something to feel smugly superior about. I could have put it only slightly better myself. Now focus, Vera. We've got so many more outfits to critique. No way to avoid it. You're about to walk right past them. Quick, improvise a fashion accessory that'll actually impress them. Put on the hot dog costume you keep in your backpack for emergencies. It's so ironic. Liam should love it. Strip naked. Tell- <laughs> Strip naked? Then tell them you're wearing fabric that only cool people can see. Fear is all about being cool. I feel like neither of these are gonna go well. I feel like it's telling me which ones they're gonna like. But I also feel like the game's lying to me. So... I don't... I don't know. Should we strip? I feel like stripping would be funnier. I don't think either of them like that one. You rip off your clothes, saunter casually up to Liam and Vera, and let them know about your special outfit. They look up and down, then look at each other, and then look back at you. It looks oh, good, not decent. Bad. I'd give it a 7 out of 10. I wouldn't choose that for myself, but it's certainly a bold choice. One could say even a pleasant one. Oh, is she- oh, they're blushing? Oh, guys, do you like what you see? <laughs> do you guys like what you see? Is it nice? Is it cool? <laughs> um, yeah, yes, I too can see your outfit, it's, it's fine. That has been Come on guys, make eye contact pleasing. with me. <laughs> oh, what? No, I know the classics. This is an invisible outfit for cool people trick. I wouldn't fall for that shit. I was actually talking about, you know, whoa, walking naked in front of people. You truly dance line between being bold and just being an exhibitionist. You gain plus two bonus on buff plus one charm. I guess that was the right way to go. Nice! Okay, I'm happy about that. I really thought that wasn't going to be the right one for a second, but, you know, might as well try. Okay, let's go sit with her again. Hey, we can sit with Coach. I didn't even know that was an option. Okay, um, we'll hold off on that one right now, because I'm very focused on getting Vera. You take your seat and... 
If you didn't know any better, you would say that it seems like Vera and Polly are almost interested in their phones, are almost more interested in phones than they are in you. You know, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, it's probably right. <laughs> and you do know better. And you know that, yes, that is exactly what's happening right now. Oh, hey guys, come on, pay attention to me. It's nothing personal, Glue. It's just that Polly and I are very engrossed in texting our financial slave. Yeah! Okay. Okay, what do you mean by that? Yeah, it's pretty hard to compete with some guy whose fetish is buying you anything you want. That's my fetish too. Oh, guys. <laughs> I wish I had that. I wish someone would buy me anything I wanted. That sounds pretty fun. Not buying things for people, having people buy things for me, duh. No, Polly, I totally get you. Good thing he's rich enough to take care of both of us. You know what they say, true friendship is sharing secrets and financial slaves. Still, I do worry that this isn't this hmm. I'm so sorry. Still, I do worry that this arrangement might not be sustainable. What happens if he runs out of money? You leave him, girl. <laughs> you don't waste your time. Our cash flow instantly stops. Beside being ha um oh. Two seconds, guys. I forgot to plug my phone in. See, that's what happens when we start stream late. I forget to do things. I didn't even eat lunch before we started, I'll be honest. I had like a slice of cold pizza. It was pretty good. I'm not complaining. <laughs> anyway, two seconds. Okay, there we go. Our cash flow instantly stops. Besides being handed everything you want on a platter, in this case the platter being an online money time sharing platform, is almost boring. Yeah, I get that. It's a little less boring when you're on your- when you're- oh gosh. It's a little less boring when you're on as much acid as I am right now, but I see what you mean. <laughs> it, if we could somehow t turn this into a business venture, then maybe it would get interesting and we could continue to profit even after he's gone broke from catering to our every whim. She is one smart businesswoman. Look at her. Oh, we love the outfit too. All of the outfits in this game are so cute. I don't know, like, ah, oh, I just love all of them. They all have something that's like really nice about them, I've got to say. I mean, how interesting do you think this is actually is? Since he's obsessed with us, we should tell him to do something totally insane and see if he does it. I don't know, a weirdo giving away his money and getting into hijinks is great and all, but I want to start making real money. And I think money is fine and all, but my favourite currency is chaos. We have to get Polly at some point. I love her energy, but we just haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> Seems like the ladies are at a very exciting crossroads. Maybe a random bystander can give them a nudge in the right direction. You can easily grow the um, arrangement into a business. Just escalate and de delegate. Have the financial slave go and acquire his own financial slave to give him money and have that financial slave go and find a financial slave. Tell him to marry a llama. We'll go with the first option. Vera's gonna like that one. Aha! See, she did. That would increase our income exponentially. Immediately. Which are two of my absolute favourite adverbs when it comes to monetary gain. Gosh, these guys speak a lot. <laughs> I mean... One financial slave between the two of us is already strangely a lot to handle, so managing an army of them sounds draining. But as long as it's a pyramid scheme and we're at the top of the pyramid where we don't have to actually deal with low lives, who cares? Nah, I think I'll just go check out- <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I'm so struggling to read today. Nah, I think I'll just go check on my toilet wine. Okay, Polly. Don't worry about her, Polly wouldn't know a good business idea if it slapped her on the ass. Which happened one time actually, but it's a long story, so forget about it. I'd love to hear about that story, Vera. You can tell me so many stories and I will listen. Anyway, we can tell people in order to become official certified financial slaves, they have to buy a kit of supplies. They'll start at a dirt slave and then if they get five financial slaves under them, they can become a professor grand slave and then they can work their way all the way up to gold, diamond, platinum, uh, chow? Mocha ground supreme slave. Oh my goodness. I am so glad that my real life job does not involve me having to read at a ton. <laughs> 
This was a great idea, Blue. We should go write the business plan together and prepare to profit. Did, did Vera just say she wants to profit with you? Holy shit, Vera sharing her cash flow was like the third base for her. Awesome. Oh, sweet, we're getting to third base already. Okay, what do we want to up next? I'm going to say we're going to get creativity up because that is now our lowest one. Which, how do we, where's creativity? Which one is creativity? Oh, I, I think, I have no idea which one creativity would be. Oh well, we'll just go to the library. We'll get more money that way, maybe she'd like us if we had more money. That day you spend some time on the library's PC mining some bitcoins. This is supposed to have something to do with solving algorithms and the rise of cryptocurrency, but you guess that nobody actually has any fucking idea how it really works. Anyway, you gain plus two bitcoin, which is equal to two million dollars? I hope that was two million. <laughs> I promise I went to school, guys, which unfortunately is equal to two monster dollars, so plus two money. Oh, that's a lot. Oh, but Vera's here! You're making your daily protection uh, protection payment to Vera when suddenly? Oh, not this guy. Everyone stop what you're doing and look at my majestic visage. <laughs> the interdimensional prince bustling in my own territory? How dare he? Not at all, my darling Vipress. I am here strictly in a business capacity. Business, you say? I'm all ears, except for my snakes, which are all tongues and teeth. It's simple economics, my love. You're an aspiring kind kingpin. I'm a prince. I propose a merger. A merger of, of our resources, our minds, our bodies, and our spirits. Okay. Okay, what do you want? I don't like this guy. I don't dig him. Interesting. Oh no, Vera's getting out of out her calculator. If she decides this merger is financially viable, good luck asking her to prom. Okay, so we've got to defer him. But how will you undermine Vera's confidence in the prince's financial status? I don't know how we uh, replace all his, all his gold with fish. Steal all his money with your high frequency trading algorithm, Carl. I don't know a Carl. Carl. Um. I don't know, do, would she like fish? I don't know that either of these options are good. Replace all his gold with fish, steal all his money from with your high frequency trading algorithm. Um, let's try the fish one. I don't, I don't, I feel like trying to steal all his money, it would probably steal all my money. I don't know, we're gonna do the fish. And that was the wrong one! We should have done Carl! Carl? How do I say that name? Carl? Carl? I have no idea. <laughs> but we're going off on a tangent. You assemble a crack team of interdimensional criminals to heist the prince's roles. Success! You arrive back at school to find the prince dancing with glee. I'm rich, I'm rich beyond my wildest dreams. Some benevolent in in uh, interloper mysteriously replaced all my useless gold with precious fish. Are you telling me that in your dimension fish are incredibly valuable whereas gold is worthless? Why of course, isn't that how it is everywhere? My god, the potential for ar ar arbitrage mm. is, you know, right. I think this is the heart of a beautiful business relationship. This isn't what you wanted at all. And Miranda's probably going to wonder, wonder what happened to all her fish. You lose minus two spots and minus one creativity. Oh, I really thought, I really, I really thought we had something going there. I thought maybe, maybe like, you never know, but I guess not. I, I guess that's not how it works. It's okay. Anyway, we're on week three of the morning. We're bustling through this one. Okay, so we need to raise creativity. I have no idea how we're going to do that one. Um, maybe the auditorium. Let's try that. That day while rehearsing for the class play, you do a terrific job at acting. You also, 
you also. You act so hard that some of your classmates in the audience throw roses at you. Seven roses to be exact. Damn, roses aren't a valid currency or stat in this game. Anyway, you you check Oh my goodness. Anyway, you check your combat trap to see if this could translate into something a bit more useful. Hmm, it seems seven roses equal two creativity points. Sweet, you gain plus two creativity. Nice! You find Vera sulking backstage. She notices you standing there waiting for an exciting event to happen. Are you in this disaster? I hope they're at least paying you. Not you either? Lord, what a waste of financial opportunity. I have to admit, even I can't decide how to profit on it. This school won't sign off on a VIP lounge, a cash bar, or a, to a toll booth in front of the bathrooms. It's almost as if the theatre isn't, isn't an incredibly lucrative industry after all. But that's preposterous. There must be a way. Bets. Very rigged bets. The hero goes down in the second act. Just buy the play out and force them to use product placement. Um... I... Would you... I feel like maybe... She likes product placement, but then... Can they use product placement in a game like this? I feel like... I don't... I don't know, guys. I honestly... Um, maybe she'd like rigged bets, but I feel like that isn't very creative. Oh, we're gonna try the bets. Ow, she didn't like it. Oh, okay, we had a good first half run, and I think this is where it all goes down. You think that? You think that isn't the first thing I thought of? Oh, I should have. Yeah, it probably was. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. This isn't my first numbers racket, darling. I went to Sadiq, the acting genie, right away with an offer he couldn't refuse. But he refused, said his artistic integrity would not allow such a betrayal of the playwright's intentions. But the truth is that the director freed Sadiq from an ancient lamp, and now Sadiq is magically compelled to act in all of his plays. He's not even a student here, and he got the lead role. Can you believe it? That's the real crime. I'm sorry, Vera. But only because I've been, I've, but only because I've been uh, prevented from committing any of my own uh, harm. Fair, Vera, I'm sorry. Vera makes up for her foul mood by teasing you mercilessly. You lose minus two fun and minus one boldness. Oh, this is all where it goes down. Okay, okay, we have to focus. We've got to bring it right around. We'll go see Vera again. You find Damien and Vera hunched over a scale model spooky national bank made of milk cartons, lunch trays, and ketchup packets. Okay. Alright, we'll go in through the side entrance, disable the alarms with an EMP, and blow the safe. <laughs> Why don't we just blow up the side entrance, blow up the alarms, and blow up the safe? Because I feel like that's gonna alert the cops way too fast, Damien. Because we only have so much C4, Damien. That sounds like a personal problem. What's this thing? Damien, it's going to be a personal problem when you're behind bars. Damien points at a kosher deal pickle in front of the vault labelled police ogre. That's the police ogre. He's got eyes all the way around his head, never sleeps, doesn't take bribes, and is invincible in combat. Can we blow him up? Probably not, Damien. <laughs> no, we can't blow him up. We need to find a way around him. Well, I'm out of ideas. Yo, Blue, we'll cut you in on the heist if you can solve this ogre problem for us. Luckily, you're a heist mastermind before Vera or Damien can react to you. Eat the pickle, rob the bank yourself, and split the money and split the money with Vera. Um, I think she'd like that we split the money with her. Yes, she did. Okay, we're getting back in the game. Vera's gonna be ours by the end of this. Quick as a flash, you take a cab over to the bank, walk in the front door, fist bump the police ogre, and walk out with all the money. That's all it takes, guys. It's just one little fist bump. You ride, back. you ride back to school and dump half the money out on the table, totally burying their shitty scale model of the bank. What? How? You explain that you and the police ogre go to the same salsa dancing class. Taking advantage of personal friendships for your illicit profit, I've never respected you more. I, sh I assume this pile of money and gold, uh, gold diggers is my share? Absolutely. You nod sexily. Okay, let me try and nod sexily here. Like that? Like that? Yeah? 
<laughs> uh, did you like that, Farah? Was I doing it? Was I nodding sexily? <laughs> hey, where's my cut? You don't get a cut, Damien. You're stupid. I've got your cut right here, interloper. Oh, Vera, why would you do that? Vera stabs Damien with one of the uh, irresponsibly sharp butter knives that the school cafeteria provides. You've never been more turned on. Yes, Vera, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, we're on to week three evening. Okay, I thought we were going to be on week four morning for a second. Okay. Um, so we are, I don't know about creativity, but I think we're going to up our smarts and go to class. That day you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes after all the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. You gain plus two smarts. Oh, nice. Okay, okay, nice. Afterwards, you discover you've been poisoned and only Vera has the antidote. She does this all the time. It's how she invites you to hang out. Hey there. Okay, hi Vera. You want to hang out with me? <laughs> there you are. Thank you so much for coming. I'm embarking on a new criminal enterprise and I need a uh, con concierge? Concierge? The idea is simple yet brilliant. Think Uber, but for killing people. Oh, okay. I call it murder. Murder. <laughs> but it turns out the market is flooded with assassination apps. Assassination apps and blood. I need a way to get ahead of the pack and since you're such a good advisor, differentiate yourself by being the only service that offers free range organic murders. Viral marketing, literally. Tailor a highly cognitive virus to make people love murder. Um. I think uh, maybe maybe free range organic ma uh, viral marketing. I mean, she likes making me sick, so maybe she'd like viral marketing. I'm not too sure. I think we're gonna go with viral marketing. Oh, she liked that. Hell yeah. You can do that? Great, you can use my private chemical weapons laboratory. Okay, thank you. I will get right on that, Vera. I will get started as soon as I learn how to do that. This is working better than I ever could have imagined. Demand for murder has gone through the roof since you released that virus. I'm glad. Sure, the side effects include vomiting, bloody tears, male lactation, uh, cobra feet, time dilation, rigor mortis, uh, rectal teeth. Some of these sound... Very scary, Vera. I'm a little afraid. Renegade spleen, microaggression, sudden tattoos, hair trauma, liquefaction, and coughing. Ah, uh, coughing ain't too bad. Everyone coughs once in a while. But it's well worth it for the profits I'm raking in. Plus, I'm making a little killing selling people the antidote for all those side effects. It's not actually an antidote though, it's actually just heroin. Same difference. I don't know that it is. Hey Molly, unfortunately um, we are doing the long playthrough so we haven't got a date yet, however we are about to start week 4 so it will be a, maybe another t 10 minutes before we get a date I'd say, who knows, I'm sure we can get one soon enough hopefully. <laughs> Did you know they used to give heroin to babies as a cough suppressant? Yeah, the real world is actually as immoral as this video game. But whatever, you gain plus two creativity and plus one money. At least we are gaining from this business venture, that's all I can say. Here we go, week four. Okay, so two weeks left, let's oh, make no. them count. And we are gonna make them count by bringing up our fun. It's absolutely dangerously low. That day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but you know, who cares? It's a rad party. That's all that matters, really. You gain plus two fun. Nice. You're all set to enjoy some sun when all of a sudden the sun disappears. Oh my god, where did the sun go? You don't mind too much, the darkness suits you, but Polly and Vera are pissed. Um, I can absolutely imagine why. They probably they probably look glowing in the sun. 
who extinguished the sun and why didn't they ask my permission first? Yeah. We already have like 10 hours of night every night. We don't need night during the day. I'm with these girls. They hate being in the dark. Oh yes, please excuse us. Sorry for the inconvenience. But these, they're so pretty, these girlies. I mean like, I'm not too pissed they turned the sun out. Can I date any of them? I mean look, she has like, lime green nails oh it's so pretty i am in love with every character i am being presented with oh yes please excuse us sorry for the inconvenience a solo bamo bamouth bamouth ba is threatening to eat every baby in the world so we've caused a solo hope you know in order to defeat it it's all very technical and magical no need to hurt your head thinking about it it will be over soon Ooh, she kind of feisty. I'll hurt your head thinking about it. Free period will be over soon, and then how will I sunbathe? You're right, Polly. You be feisty too. You you get her. You get her, girl. God, you guys are so selfish. This is unacceptable. Move the moon away from the sun this instant, or I'll find someone who can. She's looking right at you when she says that. You realize that if you don't step in, this will turn into a full-scale cat fight. Would that be so bad? I would not I wouldn't mind to see them fighting. You know, even even just for a minute. It might be kinda cool to watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean like guys. <laughs> so you roll up your sleeves and bribe your contacts and military intelligence to nuke hole through the moon. Offer the solar bay and off half the twelve year olds in the world instead of they're bigger and less cute. Maybe a bribe? Um, right, but, um, we're gonna try an offer. Oh, they didn't like it. You borrow the megaphone from the gym, climb on the roof of the school and address the solar bear moth. You explain that uh, tweens have more meat on them than babies and meat is good. But although the solar bear moth may be an un unholy... Uh, oh my goodness, I'm really trying so hard to read. <laughs> But although the solar behemoth, behemoth may be an only, and holy, I'm again, I'm a, I'm a. At this point, I really feel like we should be tested for dyslexia because I am struggling so hard. Of some fire and Melvin. It's like I'm 13 years old and I have to stand up in class and read from Of Mice and Men. Oh! It's so difficult. It's not a fucking idiot. I am. I am a fucking idiot. It replies in a voice like piping hot hatred that it doesn't want smelly tweens anywhere near its hundred mouths. Oh, okay. Siri, guys, what can we say? It looks like we were right all along. Oh my god, I yawn. You'll be hearing from my lawyers and my warlocks. Okay. Why is everyone always trying to save the world from unholy terrors? Just let them have it. That's what I say. I don't even want to live in a world, but I can't sunbathe. Polly, I, she looks so sad. She looks so sad. The way Polly and Vera are glaring at you now, you're not sure you want to live in this world either. You lose minus two smarts and minus one charm. I... I like Polly. I think her outfits are cute. Let's go. She she is a party girl. I will at some point get on a date with her. I don't know if it's gonna be today though. It depends how this date goes. You find Damien and Vera contemplating a huge slab of unidentifiable prime meat. <laughs> All right, Damien. I know we had our share of disagreements during this convoluted poaching expedition, <laughs> like when you told me not to bring all my knives. But I trust we can now put our differences behind us and enjoy the fruits of our labor. I'm sure you guys can. You mean the meats of our labor. Look at this man's face! Oh, that is one evil grin. I'm a little worried about what he's thinking. <laughs> yes, together we will enjoy this raw bloody cut of meat as a symbol of our- Wait, raw and bloody? You mean you're not even going to try using fire on it? 
Of course I used fire. I specifically instructed the chef to prepare this meat while glancing briefly at it lit stove. Did the fire ever, you know, touch the meat? What would be the point of that? A cut this fine can only be eaten ultra rare. Like, hell I can. You wait here while I'll get my culinary flamethrower. Damien, please, let's be reasonable about this. What is reasonable? If we can't come to an agreement, let's appeal to an arbitrary third party. Blue, we'll surely make the intelligent choice for us, isn't that right? Vera, I will make the choice that you like. It might not necessarily be intelligent, that word and I. We don't tend to go together. I've never seen anyone describe me as intelligent. <laughs> My word, this steak is too cooked already. Rub some ice on it and douse it in blood quick. The only correct way to enjoy a steak is after its charred remains have been retrieved from a burning building. Let's rub some ice on it, I guess. <laughs> quite right, quite right. Someone turn off the heat. Get a frost wizard in here. Fetch me more blood from the blood bank. I'd love to hear, like... I'd love to see this be fully voiced. Just, I feel like... I feel like they'd give Vera, like, such, like, a sexy voice, you know? I'm damn bad for all of these guys! <laughs> what the fuck? I'm not gonna eat a big chunk of raw meat. How am I supposed to ensure the maximum suffering without fire? Don't eat it then, Damien. I'm sick of you complaining. Oh, darn. Guess I'm going to have to enjoy this whole juicy steak by myself. Whatever. I'm gonna go burn down a burger joint and eat whatever survives the fire. Good for you, Damien. Live your best life. <laughs> Vera slip, slip you a fixed stack of cash under the table. Unfortunately, she pays you in Vera bucks. Most for more fortunately, your stack of Vera bucks is redeemable for four and a half minutes of intimate eye contact. Juicy. With which, like, whose eyes are we gonna be looking at? Like her, the snake, the other snake. Like, Let's go. whose eyes are we looking at here? Okay. Um, I would like more fun though, so we are going back to the party. That day during recess you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You're talking to one, the small magical Latino cat, when he tells you that you would ever be as fun as Bob the Scary Clown. I didn't know I was completing with other clowns, I'm just a little jester, I don't even have the title clown. You accept the challenge, you go straight to Bob, stab him several times, open his bleeding chest and eat some of his guts in order to consume his fun. Really? Do you think that's how this works? Well, it is, you gain plus two fun. Plus two fun from poor Bob. Bob, R.I.P. That I really hope it wasn't as painful as it sounds. Between class periods, you discover a severed horse head in your locker. It has a note in its mouth telling you to meet Vera ASAP. Oh, I hope she's okay. Look, she's so pretty. Purple looks absolutely great on you, Vera. We're gonna pat your head. <laughs> I'm so glad you've come. I have another crying problem, which would benefit from your insight. Thanks to your input, Mother has converted. Con Mother has cornered the market in app based assassinations, and yet. The other crime loads don't take me seriously, just because I'm not a 40 year old man with a scary scar. Those sexist morons think this is just a phase for me. Since when did having a killer body and flawless skin disqualify a girl from a life of crime? It's disgusting! I, I totally, I totally know what you mean, Vera. I am absolutely with you. Oh hey, we're matching! I wear purple, she wears purple. It's totally gonna be a hot day. How can I show these sh uh, How can I show these chauvinist goons what crime really means to me? Come on, think of something. Your most trusted advisor. I'm so glad she trusts me, but oh my god, she looks terrifying. I'm I. I kind of I don't mind it. I don't mind that she's absolutely terrifying me. Quick crime. They'll come crawling back once they see how bad it is without you. Write a song about it. It'll help. Quick, quick crime? I don't, she, I don't know that she'd like that, but I feel like that's not very creative. Maybe... Oh, she didn't like that one though. Damn. You know if this advice was coming from anyone other than you, I'd ignore it, but you haven't been wrong yet. Fine, as of today, I'm quitting crime. I'll let the other bo bosses know. I'm sure they'll be so pleased. 
few days later, you're getting a manicure with Vera when she gets a mobile notification and practically screams. Those punks, she knows the ice pick and a hung uh, hungry ma mark, invited all the other crime lords to the beach for a barbecue. They're posting pictures on uh, Momogram. <laughs> They're having so much fun selling heroin and murdering each other without me. Oh, I wish I was there. I could murder all of them so much better than they're murdering each other. And do you see how Joey the arsonist is cooking those burgers? They're not even close to rare. They're lost without me and they don't even know it. I never should have listened to you. Some advisor you are. Vera, I'm... Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Everyone makes mistakes now and then. I didn't, I didn't know it was going to happen like that. Vera doesn't leave any more uh, horse heads in your locker. You'd think that would be a good thing, but it's a uh, sim- But it's symbolic of a loss of trust between you. You lose minus two fun and minus one charm. Oh, I'm losing it again. Okay, okay. We have... Let's go. This week and like a bit of next week to get it up. So we need charm. So we're gonna go to the gym. How gym relates to charm, I don't know, but I guess it does. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place, but the match isn't as important as the human interactions with it. You're at your peak when you decide to go for the overkill and wink at one of your teammates. He's totally mesmerized and it's most epic wink ever. Damn, you know how to win over people's hearts. I guess I do. If only I could win Vera's heart. That is my current and only goal today. <laughs> Later you're wandering through the halls when you hear a voice from around the corner. Oh, it's Vera again, she came back. Hey, psst. I seem to have accidentally turned a bitch to stone with my gaze. Don't get me wrong, she totally deserved it. Her nose is obviously fake, plus that nail polish. Abominable, abominable. Guys, I'm sorry that I can't read. I try really hard, but this isn't exactly the first time I've done this and Principal Giant Spider said if I did it again, I'd get detention. So now I, I need to dispose of yet another body and I thought that since you're so attractive and kind and clever, I'll totally do it for you. You're just, I am just a little guy. I'm just a little guy and Harding is, hard, I am just a little guy and reading is very, very hard and so is speaking and it's, it's so difficult. <laughs> You'd be willing to cover up the literal murder I've committed, no question. Oh, that's right, absolutely, Vera. Easy, we'll just dress her up. Uh, Easy, we'll just dress her up in some stuff from the theatre and set her up in the quad like she's a new art piece. Uh, never you fear, my lovely murderess. My, go my good buddy, Mr. Hammer, will make short work of the evidence. I'll even give you the nose as a trophy. Would she like that one? Is that too far? Or would that, like, the nose be incriminating to her of murder? Um, we'll try this one. Oh, she didn't like it. You raise your hammer to begin the smashing, but Vera stops you with a look. It doesn't quite turn you to stone, but close enough. Wait, what are you even doing here? Smashing a defenseless girl with a hammer in the middle of a high school and why? Just so no one will know I murdered her? What's the point of even murdering people if no one knows you can murder people? I've got a reputation to uphold. I can't believe I almost let you destroy the evidence of my totally justifiable homicide. Get out of here with the hammer before I make you eat it. I was gonna give you the nose! Sigh, so someday you'll get to smash a petrified monster with a hammer someday, but not today. Today you lose minus two charm and minus one fun. I didn't- I didn't know! I didn't know that was gonna happen! Let's go! Can we sit with her at least? As you approach the table, you see Vera delicately lifting a fork full of Cronona to her mouth. She brings lunch from home. When- Food fork 6, 8. Who do we delic- Who do we delicate? Who do we del- Delicate? Delicate? I think that says delicate. Eating, eating, yay, eating. You you doing okay there, Ugh. Scott? Uh, Scott, what on earth are you doing? Scott and I are one in the same as well. He, I, and Hank, no brains. <laughs> I'm cheerleading you to help you be the best eater in the whole school. 
What caused this obsession with cheerleading me through mundane activities that require no cheerleading? <laughs> Everything requires cheerleading, silly. That's why we have cheerleaders for our cheerleaders. But I can see my cheerleading's not working. You haven't eaten anything yet. Scott, you're probably being a bit distracting, buddy. That's because you keep startling me with your damn cheerleading. I can't eat when I'm startled. No, that can't be it. I must not be cheerleading hard enough. Hey friend, maybe you can help me. You shouldn't be cheering for Vera to eat the food. You should be cheering for the food to get eaten by Vera, to Vera in the walk-in freezer. The problem is obviously that we aren't dressed up as a giant salad. I'll send him to the freezer. Oh, she liked that. Oh, duh. It's like when we cheer for the other team to lose instead of cheering for our team to win. Yes, I invented that cheerleading strategy. It gives us a huge psychological edge against teams that hate losing. I'm going to go try it right now. Those vegetables are going to get so inspired. I'm sure they are, Scott. Scott runs off to the kitchen to inspire the vegetables. You can still hear his muffled shouting from the back, but it's not so bad. That has been Thanks, now I can finally enjoy this Quinona and Baby Tears salad without unwanted encouragement. For the next week, all the cafeteria food seems extremely eager to get in your mouth. Cheerleading really works! Oh, I am so glad we're making amends. We've got the week left. We have one Let's week go. left. Okay. And we're gonna raise our fun again, so we're gonna go party some more. That day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You're casually chatting with one, one the small magical Latino cat. You start telling him that hilarious story of what happened last summer at Monster Camp. You know which one? The one involving the beehive, the blow up doll of the president, the penguin mask, and the mystery of the goblin king. Oh, I totally remember that one. Slowly, lots of people start joining you to hear the story. By the time you say, uh, say where the Goblin King was, 100 people or so burst into hysterical laughter. You turn on a mobile app that catches all the hysterical laughter and turns it into plus two fun. Okay, at least we're getting... Okay, we also need to work on our charm though. So, we can do that tomorrow morning. Later you see Vera cackling to herself in the hallway, which is whatever, but you might as well find out why. <laughs> Just practicing my Palm Queen acceptance speech in my mind. It's not like the title bears any meaning whatsoever, of, of course, and I really do consider the whole thing way beneath me. However, considering how much uh, meaning other girls put on it, I can't risk some uppity bitch thinking she's better than I am. No one's better than you, Vera. I love you. <laughs> Plus, it's not bad branding either. I can see using a victory to start off a line of successful prom queen accessories gu guaranteed to get you the win. Perfect prom shoes, the right makeup, fancy knives to take out your opponents. Speaking of which, I assume this goes without saying, but I'm not leaving anything to chance. I'll be doing a blood ritual to ensure my win. I still haven't found the exact details yet, but I'm optimistic that at least some of the items will be found in the shop. The only question is where exactly I can find the details for a proper blood ritual. Why don't we ask Coven? They're, uh, they're witches, they should know all about blood magic. Literally just search the internet, like that's literally what it's there for. I don't think she'd like me talking to her in that way. Why don't we ask the Coven? But she doesn't like the Coven. But she'd probably fought to look it up anyway. I don't know. And we're very close to prom that are like, I feel like if I make another mistake, she's gonna leave us. Maybe we ask the coven? Oh, she did like it! Oh, of course. I knew those basic bitches would come in handy one day. Actually, I really didn't. I always thought they were pretty useless, but I'm never mad to be proven wrong when it serves me. Using the skills you gain during the ex extra credit summoning uh, seminar, you call forth the cavern. What is it now? Is there some emergency in the world in need of saving? Of course not. The world is the, the, world is the worst. Why would I ever want to save it? No, I just want to, uh, No, I just want to be prom queen and I need some blood magic to guarantee my victory. And I figured you three could do something productive for once. What do you mean for once? We're the ones constantly saving you from destruction. We're the ones who... Yeah, yeah, whatever. 
Just tell me how to cheat my way into being prom queen. Or I'll start a rumor that you're just a mega swarm of bees and free people suits. Okay. Why would that- Ugh, whatever. Here's what you need for that ritual. The blood of a former prom queen, the tongue of a goat, and the earrings of an ancient goddess. But good luck getting those. Thanks. When, when I need your opinion, I'll ask for it. You did ask? And now you've answered so you can leave. In a puff of aggravated smoke, the coven disappears. Let's split up. You check the shop and I'll grab a goat and meet you in the bathroom when you're done. Well, guess you're involved in some blood magic now. Sounds fun. You gain plus two fun and plus one charm. Nice. Wait, do I need to actually like check the shop though? I, maybe I maybe I do. Okay, we'll check the shop. What's that? Good one, Blue. What's it going to be today? Um. Uh. I need something for a blood ritual. I don't think any of these are for a blood ritual. Maybe... Um... We're just gonna get the person. I don't know. Oh... We- oh, that- I didn't- oh, that really killed us. And it wasn't what we wanted. Have I messed everything up? Let's go. Let's go talk to her, see how she feels. Mm -hmm. You approach Liam and Vera at the table, but before you can sit down, Vera holds up her hand. Stop, this is cool people table, where only cool people are allowed. I would agree with, you, with what Vera just said, but agreeing is something only uncool people do. Wouldn't you agree, Vera? <sighs> nice try, Liam, but I think we're getting away from the point. Is this until Interloper still wants to sit with us? Well, if they want to sit with us, they are going to have to prove they are cool as we are. But without like trying to prove it, this is trying is so uncool. So what's it going to be? Well, I guess I'll be going then because there's no way anyone cool uh, could ever be as cool as Liam. So let me ask you this: Would an uncool person be giving Vera fifty monster dollars right now? Yeah, we're buying, we're buying her to like us because <laughs> that's like so totally cool in itself. Okay, you're cool. Nice. Look, money can't buy coolness. It absolutely can, Liam. Shut up. Really? Let me consult my list of things money can buy. Let's see. Or organs, obedience, and there it is, coolness. Why is coolness in the O section of your list? Because it's not a real list. I pretend I pretended there was a list in order to fuck with you. Okay, Vera. Okay, that's pretty cool. Oh, is he blushing? Do you have a crush on our girl? Get away! Step down, step down. Speaking of cool, while I can't currently accept cash for campaign finance reasons, I will remember this favorably in the future. Oh, Perhaps I'll call you, on late, call you on later for other favors. I am sure I can help with something, Vera. I'm sure I can. You hope those favors are sexual in nature, but you don't say that because that is not a cool thing to say. It, that is not a cool thing to say, and we would never say that out loud. Okay, this is our last one. We have to make it count. And I think we're gonna go for charm. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. At one point, you're about to be eliminated by a player from the other team, but suddenly you, you but suddenly you convince him not to throw the ball at you with a heartfelt speech about the importance of everyone's lives. The player bursts into tears, and you take advantage of that moment of weakness, throwing a ball at him. You lose minus five mercy, a set that might be useful in Monster Prom sequel, but isn't now, and you gain plus two charm. Nice! You turn around to find Vera staring at you. This often happens, but for some reason it's not a death stare this time. What what kind of stare is it then? She actually looks kind of happy to see you. Weird, you decide to do what you do best. Try your luck! Finally, if you'd taken a longer to come over, I would have had to have my minions drag you here. Listen, my date for tonight was unexpectedly eaten by vultures. Totally not my fault. Anyway, I need to fill this slot somehow, and I thought maybe you could recommend one of your more attractive friends. Vera, we're going on a date, you and I. Don't, don't, don't be mean. 
Ha ha ha, just kidding darling, you're not half bad. But seriously, meet me at the Pheasant Arms at 9.15pm or the vultures will eat twice today. Did Fairy just ask you on a date? She did, this is like Christmas and whatever, whatever damn month it is right now. But if you don't want this to be more than just a one-time thing, you'd better come up with an incredible dinner gift to, get to win her over. The head of her greatest enemy, a magic mirror that will always tell her how fabulous she looks. I feel like if we bring her the head of her greatest enemy, she'd be sad over the loss of it, an enemy and the fact that she didn't get to kill them herself. So maybe a magic mirror? Oh, she loves it. You hop on over to ye olde magic uh, my oral shop and uh, pick out the the choiciest pro choiciest product, the flatterizer. Not only does this thing pay compliments, it also GPS locates prettier people so you can have them kidnapped, executed at your convenience. You present it to Vera at dinner with a dramatic flourish. Her eyes and the eyes of all her snakes light up. I even impressed her little buddies, the guys. I want, guys, I, I think they have names, but should we name them? Should we give them names? I think we'll call this one Toodles. And this one, I think we'll call them Slides. <laughs> so we've got Toodles and Slides over here. <laughs> oh, oh, you shouldn't have. Literally, you shouldn't have, because now you're an accessory to all the killings I'm going to order with this thing. She's technically right about that, but luckily she can afford a good liar for both of you. You gain plus two charm and plus one boldness. Nice, okay. Okay, the monster prom. The monster prom is today. Vera, Vera, I would like hey. to take you, please. Look at how cool we look together. Please, it's totally gonna work. Let's go. Okay, here we go, guys. Guys, it's time. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to monster prom with you. You're asking me to go to the prom with you? Yes. Have you seen yourself in a mirror? <laughs> Your face is a crime against humanity. I know one of the crimes against humanity I enjoy perpetrating. Bye, Bye loser. <laughs> what? But... Real... I mean... Vera? Who needs prom? You focus on your pro goal of becoming a renowned surgeon. You studied hard and passed all the tests. Unfortunately, no hospital wanted to hire you because it turns out that going to prom with a cool date is an essential requirement on a surgeon's resume. And so you never get a job in the end. You became homeless. Don't even dare to think the monster prom isn't important. What did we do wrong? She asked us on a date and then we asked her to prom and she doesn't want to go? go on a date together I thought we had it in the bag that was like I'm so upset most likely to be a sleeper agent just waiting for the code word you're all the worst no this is not being funny you suck Those six weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the monster prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendships, and learning about who we were and who we could be. Uh, well, apparently I'm gonna be sad because I totally thought we had a date with her. What went wrong? What went wrong? And you know what? Like it always says, life happened and it was wonderful. School unexpectedly ended up in film school and partnered with Vera to uh, co-create their very own TV show. It was bought by Netflix, since Netflix will buy anything, even a cra crazy TV show co-created by recently graduated high schoolers. How did we go so wrong? Damien loved fire to the very end. Unfortunately, that was...
to find about a sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Damien LeVay, a peerless seaman with a taste for destruction and a love for fire. <laughs> Scott Howe, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Liam de Lioncourt, a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanour hid that he was truly a lovable dog. Holly Geist, a party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. What? And Bert Oberlin, a mean self-made gorgon with a merciless, uh, merciless sense of business. It was clear it had to be one of them, but who? We, ha we only had six weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting, we only had six weeks to woo them and conquer their hearts. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and as we were ready to start, we're gonna start. Okay, we're doing a never. We're doing another quiz. Can we skip it. Yeah. Okay. I can't skip it. I guess because. <laughs> okay. I guess my keyboard is busted. All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more. We're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose some of uh, which kind of deviant sicko you are. Most prom stupidest pop quiz ever. We'll throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character's stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start! Okay. You're elected president for a day. What's the first law you pass? Trivia fact, presidents don't pass laws, so this is a trick question or are you just being an idiot? You can deduct taxes by writing sonnets instead. Amount of taxes deducted are calculated based on the beauty of the sonnets. One dollar bills will now include a picture of me and the inscription, Beware too much awesomeness. My presidency might last a day, but my film will last forever. I think that's a cool one. <laughs> very, very charming that one apparently. Which inanimate objects do you think you would make the best girlfriend or boyfriend provided you weren't criminally insane? I still think we're gonna go for a dildo for this. Uh, <laughs> an ATM, not a dildo, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, what's the sexiest type of knowledge do a, a lover can have? How to set stuff on fire, sports things, lyrics to all Disney songs, how to make a killer cocktail out of anything, obscure 80s movie trivia, all the principles to build a financial empire. So... I think we'll go for Damien, I guess, because I think this we chose this one, so it's gonna start us off with Damien. I I guess I you know I'm I'm upset about the Vera thing. We're gonna hold back on her, maybe until next Friday. Um, I'm gonna keep my heart to myself, and we're gonna go for Damien. Um, we're gonna start off by raising our fun because it's one of the lowest. That day during recess you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but like, who cares? It's a rad party. You gain plus two fun. Nice. Oddly enough, you notice Damien and Vera having some kind of business meeting. Alisa both sitting holding vanilla folders. Uh, you move closely to see what's up. No, Vera, please. <laughs> My heart hasn't recovered. Now, Damien, it seems we both agree that uh, Gwilym the Incubus is a piece of sentient garbage who deserves harm. True, true. I believe that together we can make uh, Gwilym very unhappy. I've prepared an action plan for a potential merger. Have a look. Vera opens her folder to reveal intricate charts with titles like Diversion Coefficient Abex. Oh, I'm so sorry about yawning. I'm maximizing hum humiliation uh, dividends. <laughs> I bought a photo too. That's cool, Damien. Damien opened his photo. There is a piece of paper that says punching on it. Hmm. I admire your simplistic approach, but I think we need a plan that utilizes both our strengths. Damien nods and turns over his piece of paper. On the other side, it says punching hard. These two are never going to come to an ag agreement unless you step in and mediate. So you tell them your idea. Use the convenient list I bought that shows all, all his greatest fears in order to in order of severity. While he's sleeping, re replace all his organs while with live possums. Oh, I think we're gonna use the list. Oh, Vera like that. Are we going for Vera again? Maybe. 
stay with a girl. And she's so hot. Like, we've got toodles and slides over here. How can I resist? Most of these fears seem pretty standard. Clowns, beers, entropy, corn? That has been interesting, very interesting pleasing. indeed. I think we'll be able to accomplish some marvelous things with this list. Does it say punching on there anywhere? Yes, but it's at the bottom of the list below, below libraries and fish. Well, okay, as long as it's on the list, I'm in. Okay, I feel like maybe we just can't make a mistake with Vero. I don't know how easy that's gonna be, but like, I'm sure we can give it a go. The way Vera's eyes look right now, she's right at the top of the list of your fears. Hot, you gain plus two smarts and plus one charm. Okay, I guess we're back to trying to get it with Vera. And I feel like with her, we just can't make any kind of mistakes. I did read some of the reviews before I bought the game, and they say that it can be very unforgiving at times, so I think Vera might be a no mistake kind of run, so. Let's go for it, we'll try again. No mistake run. You arrive at Polly and Vera's table to find them eating. Wait, both of them? Oh yum yum, I sure do love food and eating. Look at this food go in me. Mm, yes, this cafeteria sloppy joe truly has a subtle flavour profile. Finally, you notice the cause of this absurdity. A well-dressed businessman sitting at the next table watching both women intently. Oh yeah, I know. Oh yeah, I know you like this baby. My eating is realistic and erotic. Be cool, Polly. This man wants to pay us for eating in front of him, not screaming about eating. Is this not what eating is? I forgot. I feel bad for Polly. She always looks so sad because I think she gets less she gets left out. She's a little ghost girl. While Vera tries to explain eating to Polly, the businessman Charlie approaches you and gives you a small bow. Much obliged, friend, he says in a soft voice. Are these two fine ladies your friends? Ah, uh, no, she's actually my girlfriend. Oh, uh, what day's thinking? She's the love of my life. I must confess that I have searched far and wide for a su uh, suitable candidate to fulfill my rather unusual fetish. Paying a student at a high school for monsters to eat food while I watch politely from a distance. But I find myself unable to choose which of these two beauties to hire. The snake-headed one possesses a certain grace? Yeah, pay me, motherfucker. Pay me to do a thing I was going to do anyway. <laughs> but the translucent one has such passion. I don't even want the, the money. This is just fucking weird and I love it. Okay, Polly, calm down. In your opinion, the businessman finishes, which would be the wiser choice on my part? The Gorgon, obviously. Look how many mouths she's got on her head. <laughs> okay, we, 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 okay. No mistakes so far. We're doing good. This businessman strokes his chin and nods. Hmm. You have a point, he says. The ghost only has the one mouth. Also, food seems to be going right through her. This Gorgon, meanwhile, has countless mouths. Such value. Value's right, Pavo. A thousand in cash up front. You pay for all my meals and you give me your pants. Holy shit, he's doing it. He's doing it. He, we, he's getting naked. Vera is able to convince the businessman to pay for a fancy dinner for you and her. It's a little creepy with him watching the two of you, but you get over it. I don't know that I could ever get over this. <laughs> I don't know that I could do that, have someone pay to watch me eat. That would freak me out way too much. And then we need to increase our boldness, because it's looking kind of low. It's sitting at a four, so off to the bathroom we go. Um... Okay, that day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. You give zero shits, but you gain plus two boldness. Afterwards, you notice Scott huddled up next to Vera. These two hardly ever hang out. You wonder what's up. Scott seems to be showing Vera some kind of sports diagram. Oh, bro. I don't know, bro. But we just keep losing football games over and over. Tej says we're just not sporting hard enough, but I'm sporting as hard as I can. I figured since you're like super smart and everything, maybe you could <laughs> fix your entire team in 10 minutes? Well, obviously I can do that. I'm incredible. Listen, what you need is an, um, oblique, oblique, oblique? 
Flick strategy, a new technique that your opponents won't expect. Like poison darts, or a vicious campaign of psychological warfare, or, or now's your chance to impress them. Jump in with an idea that will show them how much you know about winning sports. What you guys need is blackmail material. One well placed camera in the opposing team's locker room is all it takes. It's a player who's, a real, who's really a truck. No one will be able to stop them. Maybe this one? Blackmail? <sighs> oh, she liked that one! Oh my god! Oh! <laughs> We're not even a full weekend and I'm already so stressed about making a mistake. I just want to take Vera on a date. That's like, that's all I want. We're gonna get it as well. I know we are. <laughs> that's brilliant. Mm. It is? Scott, I know it's not nice, buddy. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, awesome, it is. Bro. Awesome. And what's more, I already have the infrastructure in place to accomplish this. Uh, Wait, infrastructure? What are you talking about? Nothing, nothing. I definitely haven't planted cameras in the men's locker room, and I'm definitely not selling them to um, compromising uh, compromising lockerandnudes.com as a side business, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, that's good, because if you were, that would be super mean. Indeed. <laughs> Looks like you solved the problem and, problem and stumbled into Vera's underground porn empire. Nice. You gain plus two smarts and plus one creativity. How many underground empires does this woman have? Not that I'm like judging her or anything. Maybe I just like want to help out and be like a good boyfriend or something. That, maybe that's just all I want. <laughs> okay, we're on to week two. Okay. Let's get through this. We're gonna do one week at a time. <laughs> and we are going to raise our... I feel like maybe we could... Let's raise our creativity. Hey, oh, but the creativity... I should have checked. I should have checked to see where the shop was. Cause I don't want to buy anything and I've just wasted a day. Oh, is this gonna throw the whole thing? I don't want any of this. No. Oh. I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were there. Oh, we wasted a whole thing. Let's go. Oh my god, is this gonna cost us a day? You arrive at your chosen table to find Vera looking, um, askance at Miranda's lunch. A single very suspicious looking apple. You just have one apple? Miranda, honey, your apple seems to be pulsing with unhealthy purple light. Oh, I'm sure it's just your imagination. Ugh. It also has a skull on it and it smells like a lighter fluid. I don't think it's for eating. Of course it's for eating. It's perfectly stand poison apple, you know? That sort of thing that puts the princess to sleep for a hundred years? You literally just admitted it's poison. I know, I know, and I always said I wouldn't be the kind of princess who eats a poison apple, but how else would I find a prince to wake me up with a true love's kiss and live happily ever after with me? Girl, we need to have a little talk about feminism. You back me up on this. Tell her she doesn't need to poison herself for the sake of a man. Uh, you don't need to eat that apple. Princesses should be eating poisoned apples so that you'll kiss them. You don't need to eat that apple. There are plenty of eligible princesses on hotprincefighter.com. Um, I have no idea which is the right one. Okay, let's let's think about this, guys. Let's actually think for once. You don't need to eat that apple. Princes should be eating poisoned apples so that you'll kiss them. Maybe. You don't need to eat the apple, there are plenty of eligible princes on hotprincefighter.com. Um, let's go with the top one. <gasps> she liked that one! Okay, okay, oh thank god. A marvellous idea. If the princes are asleep, I shall be able to assess them fully before making a selection. Come to think of it, I suppose this is why the princesses, princes prefer sleeping damsels to begin with. God, royal marriages. The whole thing is like a fucking meat market. 
in my kingdom it's more of a fish market okay okay <laughs> in any case you two have truly opened my eyes i shall be sending poisoned apples to all nearby princes for uh for what Miranda gets to work poisoning all her suitors but is very impressed with your enlightened opinions on gender and poison okay i'm glad we're wooing her okay we're making we're making haste for the week um we are gonna go let's try creativity again and she's in the library so we're fine oh i got a yawn oh oh i'm getting sleepy already <laughs> That day while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves have, th have descended to give you figurative oral sex. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty right by high school standards. You gain plus two creativity. Okay, we're doing pretty well. Later you see Vera cackling to herself in the hallway, which is whatever, but you might as well find out why. <laughs> Just practicing my prom queen acceptance speech in my mind. It's not like the title bears any meaning whatsoever, of course, and I really do consider the whole thing way beneath me. However, considering how much meaning other girls put on it, I can't risk some uppity bitch thinking she's better than I am. Plus, it's not as bad as branding either. I can see using a victory to start a line of successful prom queen accessories guaranteed to get you the win. Perfect prom shoes, the right makeup, fancy knives to take out your opponents. Speaking of which, I assume this goes without saying, but I'm not leaving anything to chance. I'll be doing a blood ritual. I still haven't found the exact details yet, but I'm optimistic that at least some of the items will be found in the shop. The only question is where exactly I can find the details from a proper blood ritual. Okay, it was... Uh, why don't we ask the coven? So like, maybe we do that one again? But once I did that with Scott, where we chose the same answer both times, and it wasn't the right one on the second round. So like, I don't know if it's gonna be technically right, but I don't think she'd like us telling her to just look it up. I feel like that's kind of mean. So she'd probably want us to like, just be like, oh yeah, just, us, let's, I'll, we're gonna tell her to ask the coven. Okay, she liked that one. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Of course, I know these basic bitches would come in handy one day. Actually, I really didn't. I always thought they were pretty useless, but I'm never mad to be proven wrong when it serves me. Using the skills you gain during the extra credit summoning seminar, you can fall off the coven. What is it now? Is there some emergency? Is the world in need of saving? Of course not. The world is the worst. Why would I ever want to save it? No, I just want to be prom queen and I need some blood magic to guarantee my victory and I figured you three could do something productive for once. What do you mean for once? We're the ones constantly saving you from destruction. We're the ones who... Yeah, yeah, whatever. Just tell me how to cheat my way into being prom queen. Or I'll start a rumour that you're just a mega swarm of bees in free people suits. Why would that... Uh... Whatever, here's what you need for the ritual. The blood of a former prom queen, the tongue of a goat, and the earrings of an ancient goddess. But good luck getting those. Thanks, when I need your opinion, I'll ask for it. You didn't... you did just ask? And now you answered, so you can leave. In a puff of aggravated smoke, the coven disappears. Okay, nice. Let's split up. You check the shop and I'll grab a, uh, I'll grab a goat and meet you in the bathroom when you're done. Well, guess you're involved in some blood magic now. Sounds fun. You gain plus two fun and plus one charm. Nice. Okay. Okay, we're on to week three. We're on to week three already. Let's and it's go. going pretty well so far. I don't think we can mess it up. I would like to get more boldness. So, yeah, we can do that because it's the it's bathroom you do, not the gym for boldness. Okay. That day you skip class, intending to spend the time in the bathrooms. But you encounter free, uh, free wild hyenas on the way there. Who the fuck runs security around here? Anyway, you uh, subdued them with the help of a hair comb. God bless the monster scouts and all the idiotic scenarios they provide you for. By the time you get to the bathroom, you'll totally gain plus two boldness. Okay, nice. Our stats are looking pretty high so far. After you notice that the bathroom lights are longer than usual, and it's not even giving out free cake in the bathroom day. And that's when his blood gets all over daddy's chariot. 
another problem. The good news is it's never a murder if there are three or more witnesses. If anyone tries to argue, just remind them that the death, alleged death, took place underwater and therefore is disqualified for regular trial and must be reserved in fear trial by combat. Aqua combat. Well, Vera, you're amazing at this. Heroes plus 50 money. Legal troubles, Blue? You've come to the right place. Absolutely 100% licensed attorney. I'm sure you'll find everything to be completely above board and in order. But you'll be smart enough to keep your mouth shut if you don't. It's at that moment that Principal Giant Spider walks in and his feet, all of them, stop in their tracks. Oh, that's a gross thought to have. I hate, I hate spiders so, so much. I don't even want to think about a giant one. What's going on here? Are you running some kind of illegal law firm out of the school's bathrooms? Well, uh, of course not. That's absurd. Why I never? Better step in and help Vera out before the one needing legal advice is her. What? This isn't illegal. Just asking this lawyer. Just ask this lawyer. Pull out the spider costume you keep on you at all times and convince Principal Giant Spider that you're him. I feel like that wouldn't work and she just think we're dumb. So we'll say, what? This isn't illegal. Just ask this lawyer. Oh god, she liked it. Okay. <laughs> you guys don't even understand the relief I feel when I get the right. I get the right answer. I am. I am so. I am so worried. We don't get to take her to prom on this one around. Yes, they make it an excellent point. As a lawyer, I can attest that my legal practice is, in fact, illegal practice. Principal Giant Spider scratches his head with three legs. Hmm. If you're a liar, tell me, do dogs like their noses to communicate with fleas? Does all of time travel mean that a man can be his own grandfather? Is the moon actually square? No, yes, and never on a Tuesday. Principal Giant Spider nods thoughtfully. Well, thank you for your very legal legal counsel. Here's your payment. With that, Principal Giant Spider leaves. Guess he didn't need to pee that badly after all. Thanks for your help. You know, I've been looking for an illegal legal aid. Crushed it, you gain plus two spots from that quick thinking and plus money from Vera's legal fee. Nice! Okay, now for lunch. Uh, here we go. Gonna go sit with Vera. You arrive at your chosen table to find Miranda folding napkins at Vera. Do you, do you want to know uh, what this one is for, Vera? No? <laughs> oh, take that as a yes! The rose shaped napkin fold is for birthdays between the ages of 16 and 22. <gasps> Guys, I could still have a, a, a rose shaped napkin! I'm still young enough for that! <laughs> Miranda's hands move fast as lightning, turning the rose into a gorgeous white swan. By contrast, this swan folding is for first weddings, third weddings, and swan giveaways. Why can't you have it for a second wedding? Why would you have them? As a fashion enthusiast, I have never been so bored by a piece of fabric. Oh, and this black swan folding is for weddings where you plan to brutally murder all your guests. I bet she'd like the black swan. Not very popular, the black swan folding. Okay, that's sort of cool, but I'm so aggressively uninterested. You happen to have some napkin folding skills yourself. Maybe you can spice up this interaction. You decide to show off your most impressive napkin fold. If you fold the napkin like so, it creates a self-aware napkin whose sole purpose is to fold more napkins. This withering snake fold is for when it, um, it is time to leave Vera alone and stop explaining napkin folds. We'll do that one. <laughs> that was a very obvious answer there. Well, that's quite a specific fold. Under what circumstances would one use it? Would one use- oh I see. Oh that felt so mean to Polly. Oh she's not Polly, um, Miranda. Damn right you see, and notice how my whole head is covered in bright, uh, rivering snakes. Yeah look, we've got, um, toodles and slides over here. My good boys. My favourite boys. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so basically just assume that don't talk to Vera about napkins time is all the time. Oh, my sleeve got stuck on my armchair. Okay. Hmm. It's a year-round festival. People the, the world over celebrate it by not folding napkins at me. Well, it's not a very elaborate napkin fold, is it? You explain that your fold lacks in complexity. It makes up for the 12 ounces of cobra venom, venom it can spit with at will. Oh, I'm struggling to speak now. 
Right, well, I see we subscribe to different schools of Itnapkinnery. I'll leave you two to it then. Your reward for running Miranda off is a one-on-one -on -one lunch with Vera. You've never felt so alive. Okay. We're on the week three evening. We are blasting through this. Okay, and we are going to up our Baldner? No, we did that recently. Let's do... Let's let's uh, get our charm up. Let's get our charm up. That day an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirits, leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural born leader. You gain plus two charm. Nice. After a fearsome battle, you find that you, Vera, and Scott are the sole survivors of a bloody and terrible dodgeball match. Damn, are we the only ones alive? Shit, I can't afford to lose. I don't want that on my academic resume. No, not losing. Losing is like, not a good thing. Don't worry, Scott. Losing is like winning, except it's losing. Thanks, coach. Thanks, coach. That was really helpful. I'm not sure if I should feel worried or relieved. Worried, Scott. Losing is bad. A loser, Scott, is a bad Scott. I don't want to be a bad Scott. Vera, he's a good boy. He likes to be called a good boy. You've got to tell him that every so often. Then what we need is a fast way to turn this game around. Okay. Oh, I, oh, I clicked the, I clicked it by accident. I didn't mean to, I don't even know what it said. You throw yourself to the floor and start shaking a lot while screaming. I think I got a, I think I got chlamydia. Touching the ball gave me chlamydia. What? I didn't even mean to click. Ah! I'm so upset. Your acting skills work against you and soon you find the whole gym looking at you. Did you just reveal that you have chlamydia? She's never gonna go on a date with us now. We have chlamydia? I'm no doctor, but can you get chlamydia by touching a ball? No, Scott. Clearly this imbecile got chlamydia, chlamydia doing gross stuff with gross people and now they are trying to put it on the ball. Oh, that sounds like a smart plan. It isn't, Scott. Oh. Let's call it a day. I don't feel like playing dodgeball anymore. I feel like washing my hands two or three hundred times. Bye, chlamydia, idiot. <laughs> I didn't even mean to click that one. You lost the match and everyone thinks you have chlamydia. The silver lining to all this is that later that day you learn you actually have chlamydia. So at least you're not a liar. You gain plus... You gain some chlamydia, but you lose minus two charm and minus one star. I didn't even mean to click that one. I, I'm, have I lost the whole Let's thing go. now? Because I clicked the wrong thing? Let's go get some fun. That day during recess, she saw a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You're talking to one the small magical Latino cat when he tells you that you won't ever be as fun as the scary clown. You accept the challenge, you go straight to Bob, stab him several times, open his bleeding chest and eat some of his guts in order to consume his fun. Really? Do you think that's how this works? Well, it is. You gain plus two fun from poor Bob. I am so upset about that comedy incident. I am... Like... Is that... There's no way I can ever come back from that. On the edge of the rave, you find Vera punching some numbers on her phone's calculator app and frowning. Mediocre. It's official, I've run the data and it looks like I'm mixing, making approximately zero monster dollars off this rave. With all these people getting turned <laughs> in such a small space, you'd think it would be simple to financially exploit them. But my morally shrewd sense of opportunistic capitalism seems to have deserted me at the moment. Oh, I'm... I'm really starting to struggle to speak now, it's fine. Uh, we only have uh, two more weeks left. Tell you what, you help me come up with a way to turn these chunks into cash and I'll give you 30... S oh, that's... <laughs> I thought it said 37%. 3% equity in the rancher. Okay. And maybe a little something else. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm manipulating you with flirtation. Is it working? It's... Vera? I am no better than anyone else is always working. <laughs> oh, it's working, all right. You share your hot new business idea. You see that dance move they're all doing? Passing it. Why not literally turn them into cash by spiking their drinks with this potion I made that turns people into cash? Um, I think 
that one isn't too creative, so maybe she'd like this one. Okay, we're gonna say, why not literally turn them into cash by spiking their drink with this potion? Oh, she did, she did like that. Okay, we're on a comeback, we're coming back. I'm sure if I experienced empathy, I'd probably object to this plan, but I don't, so I won't. You go around spiking the drinks of people you don't like with your, uh, mid midas milk. Pretty soon, monsters all over the rave are morphing into neatly wrapped bundles of cash. Through his goons, load the money into an, uh, into an armed car. As an added bonus, we're now created a lot of missing person cases. Parents will pay out the, uh, uh, pay out the nose to try and have their children located. Hey, do you have any more of that mon money, Alexa? I've got some people in progress who haven't been obeying me. Before you know it, you've become various wholesale supplier for uh, mid-ass milk. You gain plus two money and plus one boldness. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, where is she? Where is she? She's over here. We're going this way. You approach Liam and Vera's table to find them thoughtfully tasting several glasses of wine. This school has literally no rules, apparently. Ah, wine. The most exclusive of beverages. Even a vampire such as myself cannot resist this glass in a lure. Do you know a lot of... Do you know a lot about wine then? I'm having dinner with the King of France next week and I could use some pointers. France doesn't have a king anymore. That's what the media wants you to think. So do you know anything about wine or not? Alas, in my centuries of living I have only learned how to look good holding wine and not how to evaluate it. All I know is that I'm not drinking another glass of that one. For a point said a bottle with Holly's toilet wine written on it in permanent marker. What I wouldn't give for an experience uh As um, anyway, uh, to help us judge what, what, which one is the best. <laughs> you know nothing about wine, but you're pretty sure most smelliers, small, smellier, smellier's just make stuff up anyway. Uh, you suavely recommend try the sangria. It pairs with all seafood and blood. Uh, the cannons in this robust Mal Malbec are an elegant way to master taste of poison, perfect for dis diplomatic missions. Well, that's very obvious, that one. See? Oh, she likes that. Why would you want to disguise the taste of- Oh, you're going to poison someone. Of course you are. You're always poisoning people. Quiet. No, I'm not. People in no way directly associated with me are always poisoning people and soon they will strike again. France has suffered under its unjust king for too long, plus he called me fat at a party once when I was 11. Aww, she, she, that's so mean, she's not, she's, she's so pretty, who cares, who cares who calls you what? Where's this king you keep talking about, I'm telling you France doesn't have a king anymore. Soon Liam, soon. Vera is so thankful to you for solving her assassination problem, she lets you braid her, uh, oh, she lets you braid her snipes. You get a bit, few, you get bit a few times, but it's so so worth it. Absolutely, we got to, we got to, we got to hit, we got to pet them, pet pet, pet pet. We got two doors and slides. <laughs> okay, moving on very swiftly through this one. We're nearly done. Okay, uh, we are going to be raising our charm. No, let's relieve our creativity. Good day while rehearsing for the class play. You totally forgot your lines. It's terrible, but you don't let that get you down. You start improving improving all your lines. And it's marvellous. Somehow it enhances the pathos of the play in an unexpected way. And that's saying something since half of your improvisations is a rap battle against your inner fears. You gain plus two creativity. Okay, we're doing pretty well on all our stats. I think we can get bonus and charm up and then like, I think we're okay from there. In the middle of everything, a portal opens up and swallows Vera, Polly and Liam. You dive in to rescue them and straight into the season finale of the Interdimensional Bachelor. Oh, not this guy again! Oh. Good lord. 
Help, I'm in danger of straining my eyes from rolling them so hard. Yes. Oh my god, we're on a game show? Yes, indeed. Tonight, you three will answer a series of trivial, I mean, trivia questions. Whoever gets the most points becomes my, I'm gonna win, I don't even care what the prize is. Your what? Your wife? What a revolting premise. So you're saying we're supposed to respond to a series of questions and scenarios? Our answers to which will make us more or less likely to achieve a romantic outcome with you? That's exactly- that's extremely problematic. I can't think of anyone who would ever want to play such a, a twenty dating game. Yeah, that's like so weird, Liam. Like, like I, I totally don't- maybe, but like, what if- what if the dating game, like, contains like monsters or like I, I don't know like pretty girls it's so weird right it's so weird everybody stop raising reasonable concerns so I can hear the first question that's the spirit question number one describe your ideal marriage proposal but before Polly can answer you you buzz in yourself now it's your chance to give an answer that will end the competition and send the prince packing your hinges bees pour out. <laughs> this sounds terrifying. I present you with one of, with my grandmother's wedding ring, still attached to my naked grandmother. Oh, I have no idea. The bee thing? I don't know, is he scared of bees? What if he's scared of bees? Can we scare him away with bees? I don't think the naked grandmother one would do anything. Should we we'll try the, the grandmother? Oh, okay, the grandmother was the right one. I I'm sorry, that's not the answer we were looking for. There's anyone else? Wait, what was wrong with that answer? That was such a dope answer. Do you have something against grandmothers or oh my god do you have something against nakedness because my whole answer was just going to be naked 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 actually from you that would be an acceptable oh so now there's a double standard nudity is okay for Polly but not for grandmothers grandmothers have flesh too you know or at least some of them do the ones that aren't ghosts or shadow goblins I can't believe we're, we're on a game show hosted by a, a grandmaphobe <laughs> Grandmothers are the most retro immediate family members and we should all respect that. You know what? Fine. I'm sorry. I've abducted you all to star in my amazing game show. Go home. The image of your naked grandmother has completely crushed my libido anyway. To everyone's relief, the prince sends you home. This this whole situation remains, uh, reminds you to call your grandmother. You don't tell her why. You gain plus two charm and plus one creativity. Okay, so now we just need to work on boldness. Okay, we're on to week five. Let's Yay go. for week five. And we are doing boldness. So we are back in the bathroom. We are spending a lot of time in the bathroom this episode. <laughs> I That's totally not weird or anything, guys, right? That day you used to get class and just hang out in the bathrooms before, because you respect no authority. Well, in the bathroom, you tell yourself in the mirror that you're so bold, you would kill a tiny big eyed turtle with your bare hands. Why would I kill a turtle? That sounds so mean! That monstrous act would instantly give you plus 500 bonus. But come on, you're just talking to yourself in the mirror. What's the merit in that? You know what? You can keep plus 2 bonus anyway for saying that to yourself out loud. Oh hey, it looks like Vera's law firm is up and running again. And she has some very special clients. But my love, you signed the marriage contact freely of your own volition. Yeah, because it said it was a, a monthly subscription box for new designer drugs. And so it is, my sweet uh, sauerkraut. My love is a drug. Listen, interdimensional prince, did he ever get a name? Do we have a name for this guy? I don't like him anyway. Look at you. Look at your hand. Oh, it's just a glove. I was going to say, his hand is absolutely wonked. Listen in to, to Dimensional Prince, you've been popping in and out of dimensions for quite a while now, showing up at the most inappropriate times. Yeah, it's totally inappropriate. Leave my girlfriend alone. Leave my girlfriend alone. She's mine. She loves me so much that she won't actually go to prom with me. But like, that's totally, that's totally beside the point. 
So good job actually getting one to marry you. Thank you kindly. See, you just called him into a dimensional prince. None of us even know his stupid name. My, uh, daughter, darling, my name is... Yeah, I really don't care. But nobody cares. Holly, this marriage contract does seem to be legally binding. You'll probably want to find a lawyer. You're my lawyer. Oh, right. Well, I'm sure there must be some loophole. Of course there is. You notice it immediately. It's not an actual marriage. Polly is dead and the interdimensional prince is alive. Your love may be a drug, but I'm a drug connoisseur and I can, and I can firmly state that it isn't a designer drug. False pretenses, the marriage is null and void. I think this one. Oh. I never run on Oh my god. So we've got two wrong answers now. Is that can't be good. Oh no, not at all, my love. My love, my love is the de designerest of all designer drugs and the druggiest as well. Why, one kiss would intoxicate you more than the strongest of whiskies. One touch would have you flying higher than the strongest of acid. One, yeah, yeah, we get it. You want to touch Polly. Not gonna happen though, dude. But if you say that I married you under false pretenses because my love is not a designer drug, but you refuse to try my love, then how are you to pr uh, prove that it isn't a designer drug? Oh, I, I just, I threw her further in the hole. I think I need to think more about my answers. It's at that point that Vera knocks the prince out with a, with a frying pan she hid behind her back and Polly eats the contract. Wow, Blue, you almost trapped me in a drugless marriage. For real though, that'll be minus two money for wasting my time and services. A thank you. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Vera, please, I just want one date to the prom. <laughs> Vera's about to lift a glass of scotch to her immaculately painted lips. You can drink whatever at the school, apparently. When Miranda screams, stop, don't drink that. What? Why not? This scotch costs more than most cars. Has your taster tried it yet? What taster? You don't have a taster? What if your drink is poisoned by someone jealous of your goods? Like some royal title. Listen... Mary, I only drink four things. Scotch, red wine, the tears of my enemies, and straight up poison. You drink poison on purpose? Miranda, my hair is venomous snakes. You think poison actually calms me? Well, well, you should still have a taster. What if someone puts really spicy hot sauce in your drinks or, or poison? Ugh. What do I have to do to get you to drop this? Simple, hire a taster. Fine, any volunteers? This might just be the big break you've been looking for. You raise your hand and when Vera picks you, you drink all her scotch, arranging Vera and delighting Miranda. Pretend to be poisoned, terrifying Miranda and amusing Vera. Oh, we're back on we're back on the ride. We're back on the ride. You shoot Vera a wink, take the tiniest sip of her scotch and then No, no, stop vomiting! How would you be able to taste for poison if you're too busy foaming in the mouth and vomiting? You fool, they are poisoned! Run and tell the authorities before this poor such face melts off from something. Oh dear, oh my, oh, I'm no good in crisis situations. Here's my uninformally pleasant childhood. <laughs> Miranda faints with the utmost drama. If there's one thing princesses are good at, it's fainting. Ha ha ha. <laughs> that was a bad laugh, I'm so sorry. sorry. Ha ha ha. That was hilarious. I should put poison with my scotch more often. You can stop, um, <clears throat> sorry. You can stop vomiting now, by the way, she passed out. Oh, do you need the antidote? All right, here you go. I guess I should have let you know the scotch was actually poisoned. Oh well, how about we get ice cream to make up for it? Your stomach's so too weak for ice cream, but you'll never too too expect to spend some quality time with Vera. Oh, nice. Okay. We're about to hit onto week six. Let's go. We're gonna try really hard now. Um, I think we need to make more money. Maybe that was our problem last time, is we didn't have enough money. That day you spent some time on the library's PC mining some bitcoins. This is supposed to have something to do with solving algorithms and the rise of cryptocurrency. But you guess that nobody actually has any fucking idea how it really works. Anyway, you gain plus two bitcoin, which is equal to 200 up. Two million dollars, which unfortunately is equal to two months of dollars, so two plus money. Okay, that's fine. You come to as if you had been knocked out or drugged or something to the sound of... Oh, not this guy. Okay. Oh, 
care, what do you want? Welcome back to the season 2 of the Interdimensional Bachelor. Today's competition is our last season's floor in the Cogs. Blue and an army of sexy werewolves. Hooray! What's up, losers? For the last time, uh... <laughs> For the last time, fuck bench, I'm not a werewolf. Perhaps not, but you have a fiery temperament. temperament. Wolf-like drive and kill it out, so it's close enough. Yeah, bro, one of us, one of us, one of us. I thought we were going to do a sports game. Sports game, sports game, sports game. We are my dear sweet army of sexy werewolves. And blue. We are in fact, it's time for our first round. Are you ready? For your first test of speed, strength and skill on the interdimensional bachelor season two, it's time to see which one of your incredible likers can sign your name on this legally binding document that is in no way a marriage contract the fastest. You can see the werewolf's tails wagging in anticipation, ready to prove themselves the fastest, bestest athletes, and Damien is cracking his knuckles, not about to be outdone. If you don't step in, at least one of these two people are going to end up married to a prince out of sheer hyper-competitiveness. Thinking quickly, you eat the contract, sign the name of, uh, Tyler Elliot, the terrible first some I'm just gonna eat the contract. First as lightning, you spread over to the table where the marriage contract sits and devours it. Oh dear blue, you do know what that means, right? Of course, you destroyed the contact, therefore fo uh, foiling the princess scheme. I am now le legally married to your stomach and lower intestines. Ha ha ha! <laughs> My life is terrible for streams! <laughs> blue stomach and lower intestines are married to the interdimensional prince. Good luck finding a date to prom now, nerd. Have I- Has he foiled my date to prom again? No. <laughs> that bastard. <laughs> Alas, marriage to specific and limited internal organs was not what I had in mind for this plan, but I suppose it's better than the lonely bachelor life I've lived until now. Come, Blue, let me kiss your summer can make it official. Fuck this, this year is way too weird even for our fucked up misadventures. Before the newly wed to your stomach prince can stop him, Damien punches a hole through the dimension, rips it open and allows you and your classmates to escape. Unfortunately, everyone is going to make fun of you until the end of time for having, married to a, for having a married stomach. And you lose a lot of their respect. In this case, that translates to minus two charm and minus one fun. Wait. Are we not going to get a date to come now? Um, we need to up our charm again. Oh, the charm was in the shop. Oh, no. That's twice that's happened now, and I don't want any of this. We're gonna. I'm not. I'm no. Yeah, wow. I didn't even mean to click on you. We wasted an entire day. Oh, we did it again as well. Let's go. Oh, guys. Furious drinking class customary lunchtime scotch because she can drink whatever the hell you want at the school but Scott's not making it easy for her. Hey Vera, what you drinking? What? Scotch, why? Cause it smells like a delicious forest fire and I'm curious, what's it called? Scotch. Yes? No, that's what it's called. What? Scotch. Yes? No, I'm not saying your name, I'm saying the name of the drink I'm drinking. It's Scotch. It's mine? No, it's mine. Then why is it called Scotch? That's just what it's called. Oh, it's, is it like an energy drink for Scots? I mean, it's like an energy drink for Scottish people. Hey, I'm a Scottish person. I'm as Scottish as it's possible to be. I'm the most Scot. No, good. what will it take to get you to drop this issue? Scott's not gonna drop it unless you do something. So you cut in and say, yeah, it's called Scott's, but today is off the day. So everything that's Scott's is actually Vera's. You're right, Scott, the drink is your birthright. Chug, 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 chug. It's obviously Vera's. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you mean today is an opposite day? No, aha, I'm not sorry, not fair. I guess I'll be taking your drink. Wink? Wait, time out. If everything that Scott's is Vera, do I have to give Vera all my stuff? Yes. Oh, okay, and does Vera have to give me all of her stuff? Sure, unfortunately for you, I have no stuff. All my possessions are owned by cleverly disguised shell companies. Now, how under real wallet? Okay, okay, boy. Opposite day sure is the best, isn't it? It sure is after Scott leaves you alone and you and Vera definitely don't spend all his money on cocaine. Oh, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, this is the last one. Let's go. 
and we're gonna get charm. We're gonna get charm up. Okay. That day, an epic first war match takes place, but the match isn't as important as the human interactions with it. You're at your peak when you decide to go for the overkill and win kill one of your teammates. He's totally mesmerized. It's the most epic wink ever. Damn, you know how to win over people's hearts. You gain plus two charm. Nice. Hey Blue, remember that one time at the one party where you explained to me in great detail your brilliant secrets of your business world? Holy shit, you do not, and that doesn't sound like your area of expertise at all, you must have been pretty drunk. But it's fair, so you smile and nod. Well, I will be attending a very fancy and important business an event tonight, full of powerful people by exclusive invitation. And by exclusive invitation, I mean I'm going to use my Gorgon powers to turn the concierge into stone and then sneak in. I'd love to see you put other people's money where your mouth is if you're not doing anything tonight. You were planning on reorganizing your collection of very uh, rare mint condition Pokemon cards? I absolutely would be doing that. I I do have a few. I guess I could reorganize them. That sounds like a fun night. The popular trading card game based on the even more popular video game Pocket Humans. Each card depicts a human being with a specific with a specific job on bio, but that can wait, so when the time rolls around for the fancy business dinner, you shove them in your pocket and roll out. Blue, over here. Glad you can make it. I've been raking in business cards hand over claw so far. I met uh, Gratitude uh, Gorgonzola, the Diamond Tampon Tycoon, and Ray K Bebop, the social media influencer rapper robot, and they're both very excited to do business with me. How have you done so far? You turn out your pockets to show Vera the evidence of your endeavours, but she insists of the lobby card for the hotel the convention is in, and the only thing handed to you by a real businessman is sticking out with the word no written in red sharpie. Uh, maybe I should have invited someone else, literally anyone else. No, it's okay. You still have an hour left to the event. It's time to pull out all the stops and choose an amazing tactic to get as many business cards as you can to prove to Vera what a valuable business asset and what prom date you are. Okay, convincing business people you have a rare disease that can only be cured if you are given a hundred business cards. You may have uh, you may have no businesses and therefore no business cards to exchange, but you sure as hell have Pokemon cards. Trade those. Um This this the Pokemon cards? I should know that my hobbies would not help me in life. Quick as a flash, pull out your dope collection of Pokemon cards. Hey, yes, a lizard person in a pe peply tailor um, pinstripe suit. Are those Pokemon cards? I love Pokemon. Cries a nearby spawn of Cthulhu withdrawing a pack of cards from his purse. Pocket humans are the humans I hate least. Soon you are surrounded by businessmen, all enthusiastically pulling out their collections of Pokemon cards. Who knew a trading card game based on a video game mostly for much younger monsters would have such an immense popularity in the high-end business community? A dozen or so of you sit on the floor swapping cards back and forth as you talk stories of the best Pokemon tournaments you've played in. What the hell is going on here? Why is everyone on the floor? You should vary your impressive new collection of rare Pokemon cards you've procured. Pokemon cards, how is this any useful to How is this in any way useful to me? Pokemon aren't real. I need a business card to get real business contacts. And not only did you not get that any of the business cards, now I won't be able to either. I know how you uh, Pokemon's roll. Once you get started, it's impossible to get you to stop. I will absolutely just sit sorting cards per hour. That is my kind of evening. It would sound like a great evening to do that, Vera. I don't know what you're talking about. I might as well just go home at this point. Once again, children ruin everything. I'm sorry. You start to launch into your trademark tirade about how Pocket Humans merchandise isn't just for children. But it's too late. Vera's gone and with her minus two bonus and minus one fun. We started off so well. Vera? Hi. Hi. Would, would you do the honors? Let's go. Please? You finally park up your car and ask your beloved to the monster prom with you. You're asking me to go to the prom with you? Sorry, I'm focusing on my Ugh. career. My career is not dating losers like you. <laughs> Bye, Liz. Um, with you? <laughs> no. Denied twice. It's okay. 
You became a functional person and eventually you met a sweet banshee called Ash. You shared lots of common interests and after dating for some years you married. One day in the middle of a casual conversation you mentioned how you couldn't get a date from us to prom. Despite your years of happiness, your marriage couldn't endure such a pathetic revelation and so Ash abandoned you the next day. At first you lived the rest of your life alone and sad. Never forget, months to prom is the most important thing. <laughs> How does this keep happening to me? Most likely to vow their own children to survive. Most Sandre. I don't know, what What does she want? I thought she liked us. Um, I, I guess, I, I don't know. I thought we were doing so well. Um, but I think, I think we're gonna end it there guys. I think my voice is a little bit short. I'm, I'm slowly growing. Okay, my voice is a little bit short now. I'm afraid, you know, talking non-stop kind of, it kind of hurts after a while. I'm not gonna lie. But thank you all so much for coming today. It means so much that we get to hang out uh, for a few hours every every other day or something. Um, but as always, thank you so much for coming. Um, I'm gonna look for someone for us to raid. Um, Woo! Okay, we're fine. Okay, who, do, who should we raid today? Um, I'm not too sure. Um, maybe we will do Senna. I believe they recently re-debuted. Um, I think you re-debuted recently, so maybe we'll uh, go raid them. But anyway, thank you guys so much for coming. If you wanted to catch up on last time's Monster Prom, it is on my YouTube channel. I believe I'm sorry about Um anyway, next Wednesday we will be continuing with Fair and Breakfast and then on Friday we will be going back to Monster Prom. Um uh, we might be giving Vera a rest for a little while. I don't know that she wants to date us. Um and then also we do have a TikTok now if you guys wanna go check out clips on there. I'm sorry, I'm trying to be a good streamer. I think I meant to promote things. I'm not too sure. But anyway, let's go let's go give a raid. So thank you all for coming. I hope everyone has a good day.